Hey friends, so today we continue with the interviews. I think it's one of my favorite way of doing videos now. Today I have a special lady. I've been following her for a very long time. We became friends through YouTube and because we are also part of the same community, the Exodus Summit, you, you heard me talk a lot about um, you know this community for a while. So her name is Sam. So let me read you... Um, description you know on a youtube channel because she has a youtube channel so sam is a mom of three beautiful kids uh, she's a money strategist and she's an avid investor and so she's also looking to move abroad in a few years and what she does on youtube really and a business is helping black women to build wealth so she's here also to talk to us about one of um side of a business that she does she coaches also women who are ready to solo parent and who are preparing to give birth abro abroad so that's the subject that i'm actually very much interested about so before i say more let me bring sam on stage so she will herself say better than i can you know uh, talk about what she can teach us today Hello, Sam. Hi, Jace. Hi, hey, everyone. How are you? I'm good. I'm, how are you? I'm very good. And I'm so happy to have you here. You know, it's so different to talk like that than, you know, us, because we've been supporting each other so yes. much. You've yes. supported me so much on, on oh, YouTube. And likewise. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm so happy to be able to exchange with you today. So thanks ever so much for being here. Yeah. And Sam, can you please tell you know our audience who you are, if you can introduce yourself a little bit so we know you better. Okay. Well, James, first of all, again, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you put such a great uh, content out there. Uh, and for me, I just love it because you're literally helping me as, you know, I'm actually growing and even on the, I'm not partner or anything, but like your whole series on like, uh, uh, you know, marriage and, and money and everything that has to do, I've been uh, loving that. So ha thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, so my name is uh, Samira. People call me Sam. I currently live in uh, Ottawa, Canada. I've been living in Canada for over 20 years now. So I've been here for a long time. I'm originally from uh, Benin, West Africa. And so I came as an international student. Then I stayed uh, to work. And I honestly did not think that I will be uh, staying that long in Canada. But here I am. And as you mentioned, I'm actively, actively working now at uh, moving abroad in the next couple of years. I am also a single mother by choice of uh, three beautiful kids, uh, age uh, range from uh, four to, uh, I guess, almost two years. My twins, will be, they're 18 months right now. And uh, I am passionate about money and also black women. So I have combined the two topics in my uh, business, which is essentially coaching black women at building wealth through investing mainly in the stock market. And uh, so I do that with my channel. Um, and also I have my summit, upcoming summit, uh, as you mentioned, on November 16, which is the Wealthy Black Women Summit, where we'll have all black women getting together to talk about anything money. And so super excited about that. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I can't wait as well. So Sam, thank you so much for the introduction. You do so many things. <laughs> And the one thing I want to ask you is why the move to, I mean, you've been living to Canada for over 20 years and you yes. said you didn't think you would have stayed so long in Canada. So do you already have like, um, you know, countries or places where you actually wish to move and why the move out of Canada? Yes. So definitely when I came to Canada for me, it was like to work here, uh, to, to study here and, and work, you know, for a few years and eventually move abroad. So I don't really consider me coming to Canada as like, you know, moving abroad because my parents sent me here. I didn't get to choose. I don't think I would have chosen such a cold country in terms of the weather. I'm not talking about, you know, the environment, but, you know, we get snow and cold almost six months out of the year. So if you're someone like me who really doesn't like the cold weather, you know, 20 years is a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, and so I definitely stayed 10 years more than I wanted, mainly because of family obligations. I'm the, the oldest uh, child in my family and knowing the whole African culture and responsibility on the oldest child, I had to 
to abide by certain rules that now I know I didn't have to, but that made me stay way longer in the country here than I wanted. So my goal is eventually in the next two to three years to move to somewhere in Latin America. Mexico is top, is top of the list because my twins are born there. And so they're born there, the Mexican citizens. I'm permanent resident uh, because I have Mexicans, um, Mexican children and so that will help me when i'm ready to move mexico will be an easy destination for us but i also have ecuador and costa rica as potential places for me to move abroad to uh whenever we decide to do so wow we'll come back on the being the eldest and the the, the pressure that is on the elder daughter or kids you know as an African, when you have an African background. I mm -hmm. want to come back to that a little bit later when we talk about, you know, building wealth, how we can build wealth. Mm -hmm. And what I'm interested now is because you gave birth, your twin were born in Mexico, mm -hmm. and so have a citizenship in Mexico, which yes. I'd never, I didn't know. I, I've learned about it when you were one of the speakers in Exodus Summit, and I was like, wow, how clever because a lot <laughs> of people want to go to america to give birth mm -hmm. because of but it's not always accessible for a lot of people to, to, to do mm -hmm. that and even having the thought of going to mexico because you want to be in a hot country was it actually a, um, a strategic decision to give birth in mexico yes <laughs> wow, <that's> it was <laughs> Because, yeah. you know, you, you need to think about it. Like here in Canada, we pay for health care through our taxes. Had I mm -hmm. given birth here, I would have paid close to nothing because the health care system is designed like that. It's not yeah. like in the U.S. where things are so expensive. Here we pay th for health care through our taxes. So when time comes for you to go to the doctor or see specialists or like give birth, you don't really pay that much. And on top of that, if you have an employer like I do right now who covers anything that the province uh, doesn't cover, honestly, mm -hmm you know, I will have paid close to nothing. So, but then when I went down to Mexico to give birth, I have to pay out of pocket because my insurance here or my system here doesn't cover me giving birth abroad. And so that's why I'm also so big on black women getting their money together because had I not have my money together, you know, those savings that, that were there that I could use, I would yeah. have never been able to do it because I wouldn't have gone gotten into debt just to go overseas to give birth. But I had the money and I had that possibility to actually give birth to them. And I decided I decided that I was already pregnant with them when I actually decided that. I think I decided that sometime in June uh, 2022. And then by end of November 2022, I was in Mexico and they were born early 2023. Right. So for me, I thought, you know, I thought I would be giving birth here. And then as I was thinking more and more about my move abroad plan, I was like, this could be a good strategy for me because the kids will be Mexicans and automatically Mexico will give the parents, uh, per, uh, sorry, permanent residency. And my oldest through me then got the permanent residency. So my old, my oldest child and me right now, we're permanent residents of Mexico and my wow. twins are Mexican. So all of us, anytime, we don't need any immigration process at any time anymore. We can just go there, live there, work there. I could work there if I want to work there. And so that was a good, so I knew at least that, you know, whenever I was ready, Mexico would be there for me to move to with like no, no issues. So that was very strate strategic decision uh, supported by the fact that I could also afford it uh, from a financial perspective. Exactly. Because you had some money saved, you know, for, mm -hmm. for wow. So what was the thought process? Because honestly, it's mm -hmm. for me, it's mind blowing. It's something that a lot of people don't think of. We mm -hmm. know how having residency in any country, developed country, is so difficult and expensive, right? Mm -hmm. And did you know that Mexico had, like, you know, um, birthright? Or mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the term. Or how did you search? Why Mexico, actually? <laughs> So I've always been interested in the Latin culture. Um, mm. So I actually dance salsa and bachata, not so much since I've had the kids, but before them, I used to go out a lot and that was my go-to, like, you know, and so I, I love the culture. I love the food. I love the people, those, you know, from Latin culture that I was able to meet here in Canada. And I've traveled quite a bit also from Canada, mainly in Latin countries. So, and I always wanted to learn Spanish. So in my mind, I knew that my next destination after Canada will be somewhere in Latin 
America. So then I had to choose which country I, you know, I thought that I would go to. And I think also Mexico, because it's so close to Canada, it was a good choice for me because I was like, if something happens, it's just easier, you know, to, to get air, airlifted directly to Canada instead of me going all the way down to Argentina or somewhere a bit, a bit, you know, uh, like a down in, in Latin America. So, and I, I search, right? Because the reality is there are not many countries like that anymore that actually okay. give, um, they call it uh, the, the right of the land uh, to, 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 to the babies. So I think right now it's, it's only uh, Canada does it. The U.S. also does it. And uh, a, good, a good number of countries in the Caribbean and the Latin uh, America, they do it. But like, a lot of countries in Europe, they don't do it anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. like countries in Asia, they don't do it. It's it's more like you have to get the right through blood. So either your parents have the citizenship or you're not going to get it even if you're born there. Uh, but like countries in Latin America, they do um, value family. They have family yeah. values. So my my process even to get the permanent residency was so smooth. Like it was just like get get your document together, go to the uh, immigration uh, office. I actually um, I retained the, the services of a lawyer to help me with the process because a lot of documentation was in Spanish. So I wanted to make sure that everything was filled properly, filled out properly, so that the lawyer helped me. And so then you go, and then everything is good. That day that you submit all of your documentation, you get your permanent residency card. So it's so smooth. It's not like, you know, whatever, six months of process or nine months of process. I was able to get all of that done for me and also for my son, my oldest son, and get my kids uh, Mexican passport, everything uh, before we actually came back here in Canada. And so there are not many countries like that. And I, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm also looking forward to coach you know, black women who want to go through the same route, whether they're giving birth in Mexico or in another country, because I've learned a, a ton through the process, how to prepare well for it, especially yeah. if you're going in a country slash city where you don't know that many people or you don't know nobody. Like I didn't know anyone when I went to down to Playa del Carmen to give birth. I knew nobody down there, but you know, I prep and definitely Exodus, being part of Exodus Summit really helped me because there is a good chunk of ladies who live in Playa del Carmen uh, yeah. who are from Exodus Summit. So I was able to connect with some of them uh, and uh, that really gave me also a bit of peace of mind before even arriving in the city. Wow you know this is gold information. <laughs> I'm sure you know a lot of people watching who watch this video will gain a lot and we're going to put your details uh, on the description for people who want to do that because I'm sure many people like me didn't know. For me, like I gave, I gave birth in, in the UK, but I was already French citizen. Mm -hmm. But you know that we had to request and pay, how much was it? Like 1,500, something like that for my daughter to get a British citizenship. Mm -hmm. She was born here and she wow. was French already, right? But it was not, uh, because we were French and not British, she couldn't have just the British uh, nationality. Mm -hmm. So there's a few countries, and in France it's the same. Yeah, You have to wait to be 16. Unless exactly. your parents are French, Yeah, you have to wait to be 16 to request, you know, to, to ask for mm -hmm. nationality. And you have to have so much, like, you know, staying in for five years, et yes. cetera, et cetera. There's so many conditions. So mm -hmm. I'm sure this is something that can help so many women. Yeah, um, because and I want and I want and I want to add to like you know Mexico is also a country where where you have when you have the the residency whether it is temporary or permanent they don't request you to stay in the country for you know they, they don't say when you have because you have the residency then you need to stay for six months or for nine months so that wouldn't have worked for me uh, definitely so that's another thing that also some other countries they require you like you just mentioned for France to stay in the country for a certain number of years and whatnot before you can even have access to it uh, so that's that's another thing that also was really uh, another good uh, point for me for going down to Mexico yeah. Definitely. Even the UK, they have that where, you know, you have to stay a certain, you know, you can't be out of the country for more than six months or something else mm -hmm. like that, you know. So, yeah. wow, very interesting. So moving on with, you know, uh, being wanting to go to Mexico. So it's really in the near future, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you plan to continue your business 
uh, do you do your business online? Because I know mm -hmm. you do a lot of uh, coaching, you know, yeah. consultation. You mm -hmm. have the summit coming, yeah. um, coming up soon in November next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you going to carry on with this in Mexico? Mm -hmm. And would you be working in Mexico with people there? Or it's just a business that you will still be open to? anyone because the you know the internet is really you can touch people from all over the the, the world yes yeah, so that's a very good point and that's really the i guess the the only challenge that i need to figure out right now which is um as as much as you know i know that my retirement is fully funded because i'm mm -hmm. post fi right now i need to figure out my day-to-day -day expenses how i'm going to be able to bring in the money um uh, and so my nine to five job here i cannot take it with me i need to be in the country to have that job so that's that's also the idea behind and coaching and doing all that because uh, it's online everything is online my customers are mainly from the us and, and from canada and okay. i even have customers that are not american or, or americans or canadians but everything is online so my youtube is online my coaching is online my summit also is online uh, mm -hmm. because i guess 50 like last year i had like 50 percent participants who were from the us and 50 percent from canada and okay. not even people like you know in my city or my province so uh for me i felt like you know to be able to uh reach as many black women as possible and because money is such a uh, you know, uh, international topic, uh, definitely makes more sense to keep it online. And so, yeah, so definitely my goal when I go down to Mexico, I'm not, I'm not really planning on working in Mexico. Maybe I could work down there, but I would probably for an international company, not so much for a Mexican company, because first of all, they require me to have, to be fluent in Spanish, which I can kind of have casual conversation in, in Spanish, but not at the professional level just yeah. yet. Uh, and the other thing is also the wages in Mexico are really low when we compare to what we get here, uh, like, you know, in North America, although my cost of living will be lower, but I'm not really uh, anticipating that. And honestly, I would like to build something for myself. So that's why I'm really uh, into building my own business and laying the foundation that I need right now uh, with the hope that in the next two to three years, it will be bringing me enough so then I can actually live off my own uh, business. Right, right. Excellent. You know, Sam, also as um, a single mom of three mm -hmm. kids, I love because I've, I've, I've listened to a lot of your talks and I love when you say, single mom by choice mm -hmm. what do you mean by that i know what he means but what yeah. do you mean by that so that's that's actually the lingo of uh of uh that we have i guess when you're part of that world you you embrace it so it essentially is because single mom by choice is a is a woman who have decided to start a family on her own and so and i think they did it like that just to because most of the time when you say you're a single mother, automatically people think that somehow your partner has left you with the kids. And I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to, for people to think bad of anyone. I'm like, mm -hmm. actually, there is nobody. I, I'm, I caused this upon myself. Uh, definitely, I, I, you know, I, I went, went into it by myself. So that's why we say by choice, because it's really yeah. a choice, right? So uh, it was not an accident. It was not uh, me, you know, being in a partner with a partner and then the partner left or anything. It's really me decided, deciding at one point in my life that actually I was ready to start a family and that I was going to be doing this on my own. Right, right. Thank you. The reason why I was asking that is because you're also coaching women that are mm -hmm. ready to parent solo, right? Yes. And for usually society, a single mom is somebody that's struggling. Yes. You know, if you don't have a partner, mm -hmm. it's, it's very different. And so many women who may want to do what you've done, maybe afraid as being mm -hmm. a single mom, traveling mm -hmm. with kids, going abroad, etc. So the coaching that you do with uh, solo women that parent solo and want to move abroad can you tell us what advice would you give to these women that may want to do the same thing that uh, that you did and are solo parents right but uh, mm -hmm. parents solo what advice can you give them and how can you help them to pass that fear mm -hmm. yeah so of course you know being a single mother and wanting to move abroad with your kids there is like a and you know additional layers of things that you want to check check out compared to someone who's going on their own or have like all their kids and so um a lot of my coaching is not so much 
single mom who want to move abroad is, is mainly either they want to go and give birth abroad or actually they're, they're planning on becoming a single mother by choice and they just want to kind of like talk to someone who has done it mm -hmm. because like you say you know the society that we live in things have uh, improved a lot but there's still that stigma, stigma of, yeah. of, of like you know being a single mother and yeah. and the thing is like there is a difference when it happened to you compared to you doing it to yourself and people are like okay so they they it's it, sometimes it's even like you know they know they want to do it but it's like how do i um you know explain that to people how do i tell them this is what i want to do mm -hmm. and so and people understand it so we really go we have a conversation about you know my own experience you know coming from africa that was i've never heard of that i've never heard of anyone in my surrounding growing up who has done that and even when i i told my mom about it she was like I don't understand why you're doing that, but you know she still went on and support and supported me, and so that that's really those kind of conversation. But it, really, to answer your question of what what I did when I was actually you know at the time I had my my oldest, I was on top of that I was pregnant with my twins, and I was going to be get, living in somewhere for like you know eight eight nine months. Uh, so the the thing is like you need to prepare as much as possible mm. uh, and so that's what I did like you know I got into community groups especially on Facebook of people already living in Playa de Carmen and mainly moms living in Playa de Carmen so then I could ask questions and then even in there people were like also getting ready to give birth and then you can ask questions about the best hospitals uh, you know what what to request and what how to ask for things and and all that like physicians or like if there are like any specific pediatricians like all of your you you just lever that group and people are really open to sharing mm -hmm. uh you also need to go in there as uh not so much as a taker but also as a giver so it's not yeah. just don't go in those groups just when you have questions also mm -hmm. take the time to comment on other people's uh posts and you know and like people's uh, posts and people could see you also participating but not just coming in those group to ask questions so be mindful of that because people take time out of their uh, schedule to you know to answer your question and so really be prepared try to establish connection with maybe few people uh, who already live there and you you they, they almost like develop a bond with them that's what I did like with few people even before getting there and I was like you know we were in touch even one of them I was like is there anything that you need from Canada that I can bring mm -hmm. for you because there are certain things that people need expats need in Mexico that they don't have access to and she was like oh that'd be good if you can grab this and this for me on Amazon and I did that you know and she was really happy and I've never met her before but she has helped me so much like each time I will be finding a location like an, an a, a, like a place I'll be like oh I just found this place it's in this location what do you think and she's been living there for years she'll be like oh no maybe not this this location is a bit further from the beach you want to be close to the beach and so she really helped me to firm up where I wanted to actually stay and she didn't have to do that she she you know and she was really engaging and we're still in touch until today uh, because of that relationship that we built so really don't be uh, shy you know get into those groups and really start um, uh, you know getting a bit of um, community uh, building and for people to know you're arriving you don't have to say exactly when but then you'll be like okay in six months i'm planning to come what would you suggest and people can even tell you so that's the first thing the second thing is like you know i talk about money a lot uh of course money is not the only thing in this life but the reality is like if you're going if you're going to be doing something like that you need the money you need to secure your money you don't want to be down there and having emergency and not having access to the money because that will be the worst and you don't want to be in that position especially if you have young kids with you or like you're pregnant like you need to be able to have access to that money and for your family or like whomever uh, is going to be um you know close to you uh, to know where to, how to access that money if somehow you cannot access it yourself. So that's that's really the second part. And the third thing that I, I tell people as, as well, especially a single mom who are going to give birth abroad is you need to go with an open mind. There is a certain way how things are, like I'm, I'm used to how things are done here in Canada. And so don't expect that things are done the same way wherever you're going. You could be surprised. Actually, I really, really, uh, for me, the experience of giving birth in Mexico was way uh, higher, like, you know, in terms of um, just giving birth as a mom, the support, the care and everything, way more than when I gave birth to my oldest here in Canada because over oh. there, oh, yeah. I like 
stellar, stellar uh, service, uh, very caring uh, midwife, OBGYN, doula, like all of those people experience, like honestly, Mexico in terms of healthcare, from what I could see, they in, they have nothing to envy, at least with the Canadian system. I'm not too sure about the, the US system, but from my perspective of giving birth in Mexico and after giving birth here in, in, in Canada, the experience is definitely not the same. I just felt more heard, more listened to, more acknowledged, uh, you know, when I was in Mexico compared to here where things need to fit in the box. And if it doesn't fit in the box, they don't really know what to do with you. And yeah. so so that, that that's really, that's how I go, go with an open mind because that will really help you with the experience. Uh, and, 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 you, and you might be surprised uh, to, to actually see that it's actually way better than wherever you actually are, are coming from. Wow. You know, that's even shocking because we have like perception or... Mm -hmm prejudicial thought about a place yeah. you know you're talking about canada it's one of the powerful nations you know america is just next door north america is just not next mm -hmm. door and you wouldn't think that mexico would have top-notch you know healthcare. and yeah. that that that's really good to know that's really good mm -hmm. to know and i yeah. love what you said about you know the advice that you were giving something that that stayed with me is don't be a taker mm -hmm. that create genuine uh, you know, uh, connection, Connections, meaning yes. that you you take, but you give, it's an exchange, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. but just don't go to ask. So there's something that, you know, we'll come back now to, you know, your, your business and what you really, how you're helping women. And mm -hmm. I love that quote that you've put on your <laughs> channel, money doesn't buy happiness, it buys freedom. It is true, you know, yeah. money is like a taboo subject. Mm -hmm. And mainly in the black community. Yes. And and so what I want to come back to is earlier you talk about being a net, the eldest in your mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So I know but because I'm an African woman myself, I'm Gabonese, you know, from um, I'm from Gabon. And by the way, side side the conversation, I love Benin. Oh, my I love Benin. I'm going back there. I love Cotonou. I love Wida. I love. I'm just going back. I need to go to Porto Novo. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so you speak French as well, then? I do. Yeah. Okay. So yes, let me just come back to the fact that you mm -hmm. were the you are the elder of mm -hmm. your family, your elders, mm -hmm. meaning that you had, for what I understood, with all the interview that I follow, you had to take care of your siblings. Correct. Yeah. And we know that as an African person, I know that it doesn't help you build wealth at all because you spend 100 percent of yourself helping others and you can never build for yourself. Mm -hmm. How did you manage to like free yourself from this? Because <laughs> I've, I've been listening to you. I know that today you are at a better place. Yes. But you stayed earlier that you stayed longer. Mm -hmm. than you wanted because you had to look after you know, your your siblings. Mm -hmm. Can you can you tell us just a little bit how mm -hmm. um that impacted you building wealth until now? And why is that is it this experience that actually uh, gave you that uh, idea to want to help black women build wealth because wealth is something that a lot of black people think that they are not allowed to honestly yes mm -hmm. yes you know yeah so, yeah tell us about that so i mean that you just you just touch on so many points right there first of all growing up in africa you know i've seen so many times um you know back in the days when i was growing up at the time maybe it has changed now where, you know, when the black woman, she got, she gets married, she, she goes to live with the husband and now the husband's house becomes her house. And I've seen so many um, women, you know, age of my, of my mom staying in, in relationships that clearly, you know, was not, they were not good relationship for them, but they had nowhere to go uh, because if they had to leave, then they had to go back to the family and maybe their, their father already said, whatever you do, don't come back. You know, you stay at your husband's house, you figure it out. And it's good to say that, but when you're in like in, a, in an environment that's very toxic uh, with a toxic person and, and finding yourself having to stay there because clearly also you don't have the financial means to leave. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I was age probably 12, 13, and I promised to myself that regardless of anything, 
I needed to have my money. I needed to be able to afford my house, to afford my car, to stand on my two feet by myself. And yes, my husband will come and complete me, but like, you know, my, I will not be depending on my husband, you know, to that point. And, and I think one thing that, that, that really helped me is to become a saver uh, very early in, in my, you know, in my life and, and really embracing the concept that we know so well today of paying yourself first. I've yeah. always paid myself first. Even when I was getting an allowance from my parents, when I was, you know, back home going to school, they'll give me the money and half of the money I'm putting it in the piggy bank is going right there. So now I need to just deal with half of the money for the rest of the week. And I'll just save that money throughout the, the, the school year. And at the end, I'll break the piggy bank, take the money to my, you know, my account at the, at the credit union and put that money in my bank account. And, you know, and then I will see, you know, they'll update my, my, my bank, my bank, uh, book and i'll be like oh my god my money is growing so i become addicted to seeing my money growing and so of course you know coming here and and having the siblings coming and you know that one thing that honestly i want to tell anyone out there i never really have the conversation with my parents to clarify exactly what they are, what are the expectations that they 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 waiting on me so I, I they were like yeah you're going to be helping your your brothers and sisters but i just didn't ex ex understand the extent of it like you know in my mind I will be providing them shelter. I'll be providing food and transportation. But he went above and beyond that to the point that I was also paying their international student fees. And for whomever has gone through uh, the uh, the system here in Canada for inter as international student, it's ten, it's five five times what the Canadian pay. And so when you have three people at one point in your house that you have to pay for international student fees and everything is on your shoulders. And also on my, actually my sister was also, we kind of like teamed up her and I to actually handle that. But like, you know, it slows down how much I'm saving. It slows down how much I'm investing. It also slows down how much she's saving and how much she's investing. But even throughout that, Jays, I never stopped investing. I might have reduced it, but I never stopped because I just felt like if I stopped, it would be much harder to start. And that's what I coach also my clients about when they're going through a bit of rough time because they're like, you know what, I'm going to stop this automatic contribution to my RRSP or like to my uh, 401 because I need the money. I need to, to face this. And, and I usually tell them, your best your best friend in investment is compound interest that's like it's one of my best friends it's my best friend never let me down and so as as long as you commit to that relationship with compound interest compound interest will treat you good it doesn't matter if it's fifty dollars five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars anything you can afford when it comes to investing and building wealth you just need to keep at it make it automatic withdrawal from your account and you just go with that so that that's what really saved me is like yes i had to reduce how much i was contributing into my investment but i always continued investment and you know, within 15 years, I just turn around, look at my portfolio, and I'm like, wow, that's a good chunk of money. I just didn't realize because I'm not checking it every day. And now let me crunch the numbers. Where am I at right now? Come to find out that I have a fully funded retirement from age 55 onward. I can start withdrawing from my investment and leave off my investment with no, no, you know, <laughs> and I will have plenty because I, I literally did a, a model everything until age 100 because I intend to live until age 100. And so from 55 to 100, I can start drawing from my investment and everything will be good. So I was just like, okay, wow. I would have never been able to do that if I was just saving, if I was just, you know, getting to debt all the time. And that's what I want for black women because it gives me the freedom. And that's why I put that quote there, right? Because a lot of time, like you mentioned, when people hear about money, it triggers them one way or the other. People have yeah. a lot of negative negative emotions about yeah. money. But for me, money is a tool. It's like, this is the tool that I'm going to be using to reach freedom. Because when I get to freedom, then I can spend as much time as I want with my, you know, my friends, my family, relationship and everything. I can live mm -hmm. wherever I want for how long I want. I get to to do anything that I want to do with my time because yes, I do talk about money, but there are like three things that are more important for me when it comes to my, when it comes to life and values, it's time, it's uh, relationship and also uh, it's health. Those th three things are more important for me and I will never sacrifice that for money. Right. So, but I know that also building wealth and having the money will help me to in increase my experience 
you know, in terms of health, you know, I can, if I didn't have the money, I wouldn't have been able to go down to Mexico and have yeah. a better care, being able to give birth there. Same thing also for my time. And, you know, today I can afford hiring babysitters time to time here, even in Canada where it costs an arm and a leg when I need a bit of rest. So I have something to do and the babysitter can come and help me. Uh, and, and same thing for my relationship. Of course, relationship doesn't matter how much you have in terms of money, but you can enhance the experience that you have with your relationship. I can take my family to restaurant and pay for everybody if I have the money for it and they'll be happy. It's an experience and everything. So it's like money is giving me better. Um, it's just helping me to actually reach freedom. And so I can actually have better experience with those three values that for me are more important than, than money. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Right. Okay. You just spoke in and out. So Sam, what do you understand by compound comp Oh, compound okay. interest compound interest yes can you explain that to us because you said something about if i only saved mm -hmm. and there's something that i love because that's even talking to me right now i've just learned mm -hmm. something right now because we're in financial crunch at that mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. i'm a big saver i've been saving for a very long time and mm -hmm. i love seeing money grow sometimes mm -hmm. i don't even want to remove money because you know I would remove this. Let's say it's 1,000. It's okay. 1,001, I can remove one. But I like to see that round number growing. Mm -hmm. But since yeah. I've been, you know, we've been dealing with some difficult uh, financial dif uh, difficulty at the moment, I stopped saving. Mm -hmm. And I love what you just said right now is that never stop investing, never stop saving, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the people that don't know, what is the compound interest? And, yeah. and, and how do you invest? How do you advise Black women or people in general watching, yeah. you know? How do you invest your money? So compound interest is, is like, is the rate at which your money is growing. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about investment, so I'm going to take an example uh, for the, let's say the stock market. Um, and don't quote me on that, but let's say if you look at the history of the stock market and you look at what is the average rate that the stock market has been performing, you might find that it's around 10%. So that means that, you know, maybe over the past 50 years, the stock market has been performing an average 50%. Some years it's up, some years it's down, but like an average is like 10%. So that means that if you had invested, let's say $1,000 50 years ago, then you need to compound that $1,000 over 50 years at a 10% rate. And you don't have to do it in your head. You don't have to do that math in your head. There are so many calculators online for that. But mm -hmm. the beauty of why, why people really talk about compound interest, because it's not only interest, it's the compounding effect that comes with it. So let's say the first year, your $1,000 at the end of the first year will be $1,010. And then the second year, you start from that $1,010 and then there is another 10% that gets added to it. So it does compound as you're actually progressing. And so you want to have that because that's how your money is growing. Like, you know, sometimes, I don't know if for you, but like growing up, I will hear a lot, you need to work hard for your money. Well, investment is you making your money work hard for you. Because if you don't find a way, like Charlie Munger has said, if you don't find a way for your money to work for you while you are sleeping, you're going to work your entire life. And nobody, yeah. I don't want any, I don't want that for any black woman. So if I can help, the more black women I can help to really establish a nice nest egg through investing, the better it is because then that frees, that frees them up at one point so they can really do what they want with their time, not, um, you know, not, not worrying about their uh, retirement. And so that's really, that's, that's what compound interest and just want to highlight that compound interest can work for you or against you, right? So if you are into debt, things that I just said will be like the same thing, but like in the negative. So let's say if you owe a thousand dollars and the, your, the rate is 10%, that means for the first year you need to pay back, you know, a thousand, um, sorry, a thousand one hundred, not a thousand ten, but a thousand one hundred because it's ten percent. And then the second year you need to pay a, uh, a thousand, uh, sorry, it, so the 10% on the 1100. So that can work against mm -hmm. you if you yeah. are in debt, but if yeah. you are the one investing, then that can work for you. And I want to make the difference between saving and investing because we tend to um, kind of like mix both uh, yeah. concepts. Yeah. They're two different. When you talk about savings, it's for your short term. It's your emergency fund is maybe you're saving to buy a house in the next three to five years. So 
it, it's important, but that's not what is going to be helping you. It's going to contribute to that, but in the grand scheme of things, that's mm -hmm. not what's going to help you build uh, wealth long term. So investment mm -hmm. is long term. It's like 10, 15, 20 years, right? So that's how you're going to be looking at it. So I've been literally investing consistently for the past 15 years, and I'm going to continue until I die. And that's what's going to help also my portfolio grow. But even now, because I'm cost fi I don't really need to put anything in my investment, but I still know approximately if everything continues the same as it's been, uh, that I'm going to be having a nice nest egg when I actually reach age 55. And age 55, to be honest, is not even retirement age. It's more like even 10 years, at this year in Canada, yeah. it's 10 years before retirement age. But I, I have actually designed a portfolio in a way that from age 55, I can start drawing from my portfolio for my living expenses, with, even if I don't have any other income, I'll be fine until age 100. That is a big wow. thing, right? It, that, that is, is that is huge. Yes. It so, is. It is. Right? So, so that's that's really the thing. So really what I need to figure out now is the gap between now. So I'm, for, I'm 41 now. So it's between 41 to 55. If I mm -hmm. move abroad, what am I going to be doing to bring the money for my daily expenses? But I don't yeah. need that much to be investing anymore. You know, so it's more of a nice to have right now, not so much of a must have. Wow, that's that's yeah. amazing, Sam, uh, to be able to have enough money mm -hmm. invested until age 100. Yeah. I don't know a lot of people who have managed to do that. So <laughs> well done, you know. Thank and you. so actually that leads me to ask you the question about the upcoming mm -hmm. uh, virtual summit that yeah. you have about building wealth, right? Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit what are the topics, you know, what will be covered? Mm -hmm. And is it actually, I in that summit, is there actually speakers helping actually women to know where to invest, how to invest? I'm mm -hmm. doing in all that has to do with uh, this French l'immobilier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the real estate. Real, real estate, estate mm -hmm. right? So can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit what we can find in the summit and what can yeah. we gain from coming to the summit? Yeah. So my focus is really on investment. For me, that's really how you're going to be growing your money. And so you can grow your money by stock investing, by doing real estate investing, as you just mentioned, or like having a business. You can also grow your money that way. So I'll say probably if you look at the topics right now, they, re they revolve around that. So I will have a session with uh, Money Coach Malika on investing. So I'm cost five. She's fully five. She she has reached the number that she can draw from her, from her portfolio, and I think she's I think she's probably like close to um, maybe mid forties or, or late forties. I'm not hundred percent sure, uh, but you know just to say that uh, she you know she she does in she does coach black women also to in terms of investing, and I do that as well. So we're going to be having a, a session together talking about the most powerful retirement um, e uh, account that black women should consider, and. Also, we'll have a session on business. So I have people, I have someone who will talk about how do you go from being an employee to being an entrepreneur? Because that mm -hmm. switch is, it can be really hard at times, right? So it's like, how do you make that switch? Because she has done it. Uh, I have someone who also owns brick and mortar. She has like an uh, air, like a beauty supply store. And it's not, it's not so much my thing, but I've also realized that uh, some people are interested in actually investing in brick and mortar, uh, mm -hmm. businesses so she will come and, and you know talk about the challenge especially being a black woman in that space what yeah. is it that essentially how she's actually overcoming that uh, we'll also talk about money mindset and that's so important because that's one thing that I've realized in my coaching so me I'll start my coaching by like so how much money you want to have when you're like 60 and they'll say okay yeah this amount and then I'm just working the numbers come to find out there is so much to it because people have so many uh, you know, emotions with money coming from yeah. childhood, from past yeah. experience, whether it is shame, guilt, uh, av avoiding money, or like being anxious about money, stressed about money. And so I realized that I needed to work with my customers more sometimes on that part, even to help them see the benefit of investing, because depending on what you experience, maybe you just won't, because they're like, people are afraid of the stock investing mark, stock market. They're like, I'm, I'm going to, right? <laughs> My husband <laughs> is big into it for over 20 years. I'm like so scared. Right? Like bonds, bonds, how do you call it? You know? And yeah, you the, that we are bonds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> They're like, I want my money in the city. I want my money in the high savings, uh, high yeah. interest savings account. I want my money in bonds. But I mean, yeah. those are nice. They provide you safety. But in terms of, you know, return yeah. re- return yeah. you're not gonna be getting that much no. if you put all of your money into that right so yeah. it's like yeah. so you work with the people to really help them to have a risk profile you know to kind of like be more comfortable taking on risk and uh and 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 there is a whole a whole uh, area of of things so asia she's a she's a financial therapist and she'll she's going to come and talk to us about how being empowered as black women with our money and so she's going to be touching a lot on those money emotions money mindset so really really excited to have her and also i have someone coming to talk about you know us black women we're really good at doing the work but like sometimes we're not that great at as asking for people to pay us our our worth and, yeah. and so we need to get better at it and you know being able to negotiate whether it is uh you know if our salary if you're working for an employer or like how are you going to be pricing your goods and and pro- and your goods and services just to know that yes you know you're willing to help but you don't want to also make your business uh do your business for free it's it you know it's not a non-for-profit you need to find a way uh so Teen Zekis, uh, she her thing is to getting black women paid. So she's yes, coming to really, yeah. Sh- yeah, all right. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I know a lot of the, the the women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really excited to have her also 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 uh, coming um, to to talk about that. And uh, as you know, I don't know if you have noticed, there is also a session on the susu that we call tantine tantine in in French. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So yes, I mean that is amazing. Why yes. so I feel like it's something that we can we can leverage more in the modern world, right? So it, it, we people are big on it on in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia, especially you know our ancestors Latin when they America did America as well? Yes, yeah, in Latin America as well. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and then in in uh, Asia, in Latin America, and uh, in Africa, people are really they, they don't call it the same thing, uh, yeah. but it's the same concept. And I've always been interested in that uh, concept. I even did my uh, um, how do you call it? My thesis of my master. It's yeah. on mo- mobile banking in in Benin. So I had yes. to go back and interview people who were doing that, and I I was really interested by that. And for me, when you look at it, people use that system to pay for their kids education to to buy houses to buy to go on trips to you know pay for funerals like so many ways right so weddings uh you know i do that right in cameroon exactly my brother's wedding just now passed Mm -hmm. last month Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the tontine you know because the wedding was happening there so yeah. I didn't have to think about it. And just the money that I'm earning in Gabon because yeah. I have a real estate there. So I just took something that I was sending there and yeah. it's a way. I love that right. you have that. When I saw yeah. that, I love that you have that. <laughs> because there's something that is not known. And my community have a lot of African mm-hmm. people as well. And I know that's something that people will resonate. And it could mm-hmm. be like a, a step into investing that is less exactly frightening. You see mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's really to give that option to black women out there who maybe don't know about it. And that could be something that they might want to try on as they're actually working their way into investing. Because, again, uh, you know, that could be a, a good a good step step up. And uh, and yeah, so and we'll talk about AI as well. Uh, so, yeah. as you know, AI is becoming a big thing. And so I have, B- I have Bisola who's coming uh, to talk about how to leverage AI to build multiple streams of income, because that's one thing that I've realized a bit later in my life, the importance of having multiple streams of income. Because when you have all of your eggs in the same basket, you're getting your money from the same employer, that really yeah. limit, limits you in terms of, you know, flexibility. I'm all about having options, you know, having freedom, having flexibility, and yeah. just one stream of income, you're just too close to zero stream of income. So you need to be able to have more streams of income. So she will tell us, you know, she will kind of like share with us how we can leverage AI to be able to 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 build that. So honestly, I'm so excited and I'm probably going to have also someone, I just spoke with someone earlier today. Uh, she's a realtor. Uh, she's a black woman and uh, she might actually come on board also to talk about uh, real estate investing. What is that? What does that look like for black women these days? Uh, and so so then I would I would cover all the three aspects of investing, which is, you know, stock, stock market investing, real estate investing and also uh, business in business investing. 
Yeah, that's a good point because, you know, a lot of people I've seen in the community, Exodus Summit, where we are, of Black women, a lot are investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. And I know that's one of something that I'm very much interested about, you know, because that's what I do. You know, mm -hmm. my mom had that. I don't know if you see now with family blood, but I build everywhere I go. It's, uh, it, it, you know, in Cameroon, in Gabon, that's where mm -hmm. my investment is and mm -hmm. how I make money. So I've put a bit of the link of, you know, the, the summit here. But guys, we're going to put all of that inside in the description, you know, so go go there. There will be also a uh, Sam's channel there mm -hmm. and feel free to her channel because she talks a lot more in details about that and Sam, i want to come back to something yes. because to me the fact that you went to mexico mm -hmm. strategically have kids there to have residency do you think for me it feels like it's also somehow a way to even continue i don't know how to say that retaining your wealth because mm. The cost of living of Mexico is way lower than Canada, yes, you know, America, I mean, North America, etc. Mm -hmm. So, even if you have that nice cushion of money that's there for you to be able to live when you're 55 and you know, onwards, mm -hmm. you will spend a lot less if you stay in in Canada. So, do yeah. you think that's also maybe another way that you can actually retain yes. your wealth? Yes, so definitely, because then when you go in an uh, in a in a, an area where the cost of living is lower, then you 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 can stretch your money longer, right? Yeah. So maybe to live here, I'll need let's say uh, just as an example, hundred thousand dollars to live here in 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 Canada. But then when I go down to Mexico, then that cost you know goes down thirty forty percent, and I'm ju I just need to spend like sixty thousand. And you know sixty thousand in Mexico, you live good, like you eat well, you're in a l nice place. Uh, you know, you you can afford to have a very good life. But maybe sixty thousand here in in Ottawa, Canada. I mean, you can still have a good life, but not probably not so good that you know if you were in in Mexico because of the you know the currency exchange. Just to to say that you know your, your Canadian dollars or your U.S. dollars will provide you more in pesos and will allow you to do more. So. And a lot of retirees actually do that, right? So it's it's nothing new. It's just like now we're seeing younger people like you and I wanting to do that. Not in yeah. our 70s, not in our 80s, but exactly. right now, right? Right now. I want to do it right now, you know, yeah. in our 40s and in our, in our 50s. So people yeah. are like, oh, can you do that? Yes, you can do that. That's not new. And you don't need yeah. to wait for retirement age before you can actually do that. But a lot of people like, you know, U.S. Uh, American people, especially when they only, you know, they haven't really planned so much for the retirement and the only income they have at retirement is like social security and maybe a small pension then they realize that they can't really have a good life if they stay in america and that's where when it's you know they'll be looking at going to countries like mexico or like other countries or like southeast asia where you have countries like thailand and vietnam and uh, malaysia where you can honestly live really good uh you know, on a very small social security uh, income, but you know, in the in the U.S., you can't, you cannot do that. And the same thing for Canadians as well. If you don't plan your retirement properly, uh, and then you rely on government benefits, then yes, you're gonna get the money. But living in the country might be really hard for you because things are just expensive. And so exactly. again, you will see so many people, retirees going uh, in Latin America and like Southeast Asia, uh, and also a bit of um, Eastern Europe, I guess. Uh, it, it's also becoming a thing for people to go to and, and actually uh, leave. But you know, the way I've designed my retirement, if I, I don't really care about getting government benefits. I don't know if I can trust government the way things are going. So if they give they give me anything when I re, when I re, when I you know yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I yeah. I don't I don't really care. So that's the yeah, thing, and that yeah. that's what I'm also coaching black women on because some of them will be like, yeah. So when I'm 65, I'm gonna be getting this for social security or like for for us it's CPP. I'm like, can you not take that in consideration? Is there so let's just say this will be like the cherry on the top. But we are not going to be designing, you know, how much we want to have for our golden years, counting on government benefits. If it comes, that's good. You have some extra money to do anything you want. But if it doesn't, that's also good. 
because you have already think of, you know, things that you needed to do by yourself. So I'm really big proponent of not, you know, don't give that control of your self you know, your future life to like government or like, I mean, if you have a pension from a company, probably you'll be getting that, but it's more like the benefits that technically people think that they will be getting because they have contributed into it their entire life. I'm like, for me, I just consider that as sunk cost. It's gone. It's gone. I'm not, Same. I'm not counting on it. So, <laughs> and you know, the retirement age, you know, the pension age, mm -hmm. like the, the, it's in the UK is now 68. Wow. And it's going to push to 70. You're not even sure to have that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I've seen that even to the generation younger, like mm -hmm. my kid, 26 and 21. Yeah. These kids don't want to spend their entire life and die walking. <laughs> oh. Honestly, I see my daughter already both entrepreneur, you know. Amazing. Investing to because they don't want to be just working their, their entire life. Yeah. Do you feel that in Black women, because you're coaching a lot of Black women, mm -hmm. that and African women, is the mentality shifting? Oh, yeah. It is. It, money? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, definitely I'm more exposed to, let's say, uh, Black women, African Black women who have immigrated here or like in the U.S. But yeah. like it's shifting quite a bit because again you know in this era of internet and being able to launch something and if you do it well you can literally you know have a very good uh return on investment people yeah. are just like out there uh, trying you know hustling and bustling trying to find what what exactly can i do uh that can actually help me um you know build wealth uh, and so not so much you know quick, re, uh, you know, get get rich uh, quick scheme, but like, you know, they just realize that now they don't need to be working for an employer for 40 years because, I mean, back in the days, there was there was a comp compensation for you working for an employer for 40 days. They were guaranteeing you a pension. They were guaranteeing you health benefit at your retirement. But like fewer and fewer companies now are guaranteeing any pension. You're going to work for them for 30 years and you're not even guarantee a pension. So essentially, if you don't invest well and then you know, whatever your investment goes sour right before retirement or anything, they're not guaranteeing anything to you. So no, those young people now, they're like, okay, maybe I don't want to be faithful to an employer that much. And I'm going to be going where I can really make the big buck so I can have more right now that I can start investing. Because when it comes to investing, yes, compound interest is your friend, but time is your friend also. The Absolutely. earlier you start, the better. Yeah. I'm not saying if you like in your 50s and 60s, you it's too late. But all I'm saying is like, Definitely, the earlier you can start, the better. And if it's today, then it is today because tomorrow it's a, like, you know, on, another 24 hours that you have lost. So the earlier you can put your money into the, the your investment, whether it is real estate, stock market or anything, the earlier you can put your money in, you know, to work for you, the better it is. So, yeah, I'm really, honestly, I'm so inspired by those young people out there uh, and really you know, pushing against the norm also. Like yeah. we don't, we, we reject these society norms. This is not for us. We are going to be living our life the way we want. And uh, yeah. and uh, for me, I'm, uh, honestly, I 100% I support them. And there are others that they just want to have, you know, I guess the regular life as we know it. And that's, there is nothing wrong with that. But I can really see the shift, you know, even chatting with people. Uh, they're like, okay, well, is it that I'm going to move somewhere else and have even like say in the same country, but moving into another city where it's cheaper so I can keep more money in my pocket so I can actually invest because it's like you need to find that gap between your income and your expenses that will give you that money that essentially you're going to be putting into your investments. And that's honestly, it's so beautiful to see. Yeah. Excellent. You know, you've said what I want to ask is, do you think the summit will benefit anyone? Like I live in the UK, mm -hmm. right? Uh, anyone actually, regardless to, or where they live, would the, this uh, summit benefit everybody? Anybody? To be quite honest, I do think so. Uh, it just happened that, uh, you know, I guess the way that I do my marketing may be different now because you're living in the UK and maybe probably you have a, an audience that is more, uh, you know, on, on your on the side of the thing. But the way that I do my marketing, it just happened to be that, you know, more Americans and Canadian people uh, look at it. But, you know, but again, last year I've had people uh from Europe, from Caribbean, who yeah. actually attended the, the summit as well. Of course, there will be some sessions that, you know, maybe will be less 
relevant for you because we might be talking about specific, uh, let's say, accounts or like your know, specific um, 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 different laws that are more like U.S. or Canadian uh, geared towards U.S. and Canadian. But then, like you know, the the session from Bisola on like AI tool to build a uh, different stream of income, anyone can can learn from that. Same thing from going from an employee to an entrepreneur, anyone can learn from that. How to get paid as a black woman, getting your worth, anyone can learn from that. And the Susu session, anyone. Can so there are many sessions that honestly any black woman can learn from. There might be one or two that I can think from the top of my head right now that might be more geared to, uh, you know, America, like you know, uh, U.S. or like uh, Canada. But like for the most part, I do believe that you can really get uh, a good. Um, a good, uh, uh, like you know, value for for yeah. your money, and just to let you know, my prices are in Canadian dollars. For so for you guys who are like you know in pound or like for the Americans who are like in US dollars, that will be way less than what you will see on the website. So you know, I don't know how much are the prices right now, but let's say if it's eighty nine Canadian dollars, I don't know how that converts, but I'm pretty sure it's like maybe sixty or like seventy pounds, and same thing for US uh, US dollars. So you actually get to save quite a bit of money by joining this summit. <laughs> lot less than that yeah oh even you see so because yeah. if you talk in sterling pound yeah it's i've just converted it right yeah. now it's about 50 pounds says than 50 pounds right there okay i okay. feel like the, the canadian dollars is like the peso when we talk about us dollars <laughs> <laughs> all, all the pounds <laughs> <laughs> it is 50 pounds yeah it is and, uh, very affordable it is uh, and don't forget it's an entire day i have 10 speakers expert expert in what they're doing we're going yeah. to be coming and sharing and honestly my keynote speaker i didn't talk about her gwen mariba she's Honestly, she's just phenomenal. She's uh, the keynote speaker. She's gonna wrap up everything toward the end of the, the 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 day to really help us, you know, put us in the mood to actually and send us in the world so we can start applying uh, things. And one thing that I want to mention also, Jay, is, is there is a Facebook group that is called of the same name, the Wealthy Black Women Summit. And I strongly suggest to any Black woman, whether you are attending the summit or no to request, you know, joining that private Facebook group because that's where, you know, once the summit is over, the summit is just one day, but once yeah. the summit is over, we'll have that space for us black women to come together and whether it is for you to get an accountability partner, to get, you know, the support of a community, being able yeah. to share anything that is money related without anyone shaming you, guilt, you know, feeling you guilty or like making you feel guilty or anything like that. This is where essentially you want to be and so you can you can, because sometimes we don't have people like that in our lives that we yes. can actually have conversation about money about uh, you know uh, about money so i feel like you know having that space will be really something that can be of value uh you know before and after the summit so that's really essentially even if you don't attend the summit please join the facebook group and let's grow together in in building wealth wow thank you so much sam and so the summit is on the 16th of uh, november november correct and so it's one day it's a full yes. day it's a full what day what are the times so the timing do you so that will be idea? early for you guys uh because you guys actually no you guys are ahead of us so it starts at 7 a.m eastern time and we start with a yoga session because I want everybody to be Zen for the day. So we have a yoga session at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah. I believe you guys are five or six hours ahead. So that'll be kind of like early well, afternoon for you. Yes, yeah. Yes, midday, and, yeah. And then we go all the way to 8 p.m. our time. So that will go into the night for you guys, uh, for anyone living on the U uh, Europe side, uh, because the, the keynote speaker is at 7 p.m. and uh, probably will last um, an hour so yeah yeah until 1 1, 1 a.m yeah. yeah and so, so this the 16 i'm just checking what day is it is it, it is a saturday oh that's fine so yeah it, it is a saturday yeah. So it gives time for people to, you know, spend the day and then sleep the next day. Exactly, yeah. And I'll strongly recommend for you to get the VIP pass. The VIP pass gives you access to replays. So in case you miss any session or whatnot, you can uh, you can have the VIP pass and that will give you access to the replays until uh, end of February 2025 end of february 2020 yes okay and so when you take just the day pass which is not the vip you don't have the replay included but no until it, when can you access so the day pass is really for the day so that'll be that you need to ask you need to attend that day um okay. and then just the vip pass will give you access to the replay 
So it's really interesting to have the VIP pass, which is not really more. So yeah, much more. I think it's just $20, 20 or $30 more. So yeah, let, let me it'll, just be like, think that's it'll be like, it'll be like five, five pounds for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I promise I'm not making fun of the okay. Canadian dollar. But it's, but it's really, it's, you know, it's good that you actually mentioned that because if you see the price, you don't compute how much yes. it is, but yeah. it's a lot less actually. Of course. Yeah. Us. And it's, it's like the opposite for me when I, when I, each year that I get my, my Exodus for me ticket, then I, when I see the, the, the charge on my credit card, I'm like, I never made this purchase. What is this purchase? Because the <laughs> price is so different and it's much higher. It's like 30 or 40 bucks much higher. And I'm like, what is this? And then I look at it, it's like Exodus for me. I'm like, of course. I mean, I'm so sort of like weird currency. So, you know, any currency is higher. So, of course, you know, 90 bucks. And then I see like 120 or 130 on my charge. I'm like, oh, Lord. So exactly. it's kind of like the opposite for me. <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know the Exodus Summit, we both, Sam and I, that's how we met. We're part of the community. I spoke mm -hmm. about it a lot of time is the Exodus Summit, who yeah. actually uh, is this weekend. Yeah. Right? Is yeah. this weekend. Uh, are you on the... Uh, Exodus Summit this year? Um, you... I'll be participating. I'm not part of the speakers, but uh, okay. I will be uh, participating and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a long weekend for us too. So, you know, even it's the, the Monday. Today, isn't it? Yeah, it's starting this uh, this evening. Mm -hmm. This evening, yeah. So yeah. for me, it would be tomorrow. Anyway, I can't count. Uh, yeah, but yeah, for you, yeah. it will be early, probably late, late at night, where I late think the night, first session yeah. is at 6 or 7 p.m. my time, Eastern time. Yeah. So that will be like late in the late night for you. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So guys, that's for the Exodus Summit that's running this weekend right now, starting today, three days. It's not too late to, to join. No. Yes. And so you have that summit to join. It's just to my channel, you know, that I have a lot of people from all over, but these two summit is geared to black women. Yes. So some uh, summit and, you know, a business is about helping black women building wealth. Yes. So Sam, that was, you know, just although I've been following you for so long and I've followed your interview and I follow your channel, just having you here on the channel, I've learned so much. <laughs> and I definitely want to participate in your summit. Mm -hmm. Last year I saw it, but you just helped me with the price conversion right now. <laughs> Because I'm very broke right now. But I'm like, that's actually affordable. Yeah. Because I'm reading the price in, in, in US dollar. I mean, no. Canadian dollar. Yeah. But then but, when you compute this, that's, yeah, that's I know. I know. That's a lot of knowledge for, you know, and, and I know when you're part of this summit, guys, it's because I've participated myself in summit, you earn a lot. You live mm -hmm. with so much tools yes. and confidence, you know, mm -hmm. to start building your own wealth. Mm -hmm. So although it's one day, and that's why the VIP is very interesting because you have until next year. Because yes. a lot of the session when you you go to the summit, you want to go back to listen, to write, yeah. take notes, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's why the VIP session is is very interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I know as a busy mom of three, okay, <laughs> that the, the, the kid will certainly come back soon and... Um, it was mm -hmm. such a pleasure to discuss with you. I oh. hope I can have you back oh. on the channel. If you have uh, me back, I will come back. <laughs> yes, we, oh, I will definitely have you back. And I want you on my French channel as well. Because oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that's true. Yes, because I do think that, um, you know, even French people, today English is the international language. Correct. So I see that even on my French channel, there's a lot of people that speak English and mm -hmm. that will benefit from that as well. And that mm -hmm. may be left out mm -hmm. of, of this because mm -hmm. of the language, which is not really a barrier for the people to, who speak. So I would mm -hmm. love you to come and also have that conversation on the French channel mm -hmm. to give you know the opportunity of um, Black women. For me, I'm geared more toward African women because yes. I know... I mean, black women, definitely. Black African mm -hmm. is all the same with all black women. African women, because uh, you're American, Canadian, black, you know, mm -hmm. are more uh, emancipated mm -hmm. about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And as you were saying, in Africa, a lot of women have one goal is to be married. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. the 
destination. You know, the, 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 and what happens often is when the husband is a leave them, dies, mm -hmm. or something, they are lost because they know nothing. Yes. They have not, um, you know, know how to make their own money. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I want these women and a lot are online today with internet mm -hmm. to know that they can save money, they can make a business, they can mm -hmm. start with small. You say that yeah. in the interview lately, like, you know, start with where you are. Yes. You know, even if you don't have money, you always have money for something. Yes. So start small, but yes. invest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So is there anything else you would like to add? Anything at all that you want to share with the audience? Um, well, honestly, I want to thank you, Jays, for being out here and for everything that you're doing. Like, honestly, your content is golden. Like, I'll, I'm always saving your thing and watch later because sometimes I want to catch up with videos. And, you know, like I said, I'm not partner right now, but you are like an inspiration for me, you know, being married for more than 25 years. I'm like, I can learn from this woman. And you have been having amazing guests. Like you had a guest who literally manifested her husband. And I'm like, I need to listen to this woman, you know, like she, she did it. So, and honestly, uh, yeah, I want to, I want to thank you and, you know, allowing me to come and, and talk to your audience. I would love to be back anytime that you, you feel like it will be a good time for you either on your English or, or French channel, but uh, it's been, uh, it's been a, a pleasure. And I, and honestly, I'm, just waiting for the day where we'll get to meet in person because I'll give you such a big hug because yes, yeah it'll be it'll be amazing <laughs> definitely well, it was such a pleasure so thank you I'll let you go look after yes. the kids you know or you know what mom do exactly. so and all the best with the summer thank I'm you gonna be there because I know I'm going back into investing and I want to mm -hmm. try trading mm, okay so, but I'm, I'm, so I want to get the confidence. Okay. <laughs> to do the invest outside of the, you know estate mm -hmm. um, investment. So, that, that's okay. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I hope that you will like it. Yeah. And if you have any question, if anyone has any question about this, I mean, feel free to, to, you know, put a, a note in the comment. I hope you guys have already liked this video by now because Jay's is, is, she's, She's doing the work. So like the video, please subscribe to her channel. Uh, hit the notification bell, of course, and feel free to share in, in the comments below if you have any question about the summit. Uh, I will be happy to come back and answer those questions. Excellent. Thanks ever so much. And same, likewise, guys, you know, I have some channels here. Go like the, the, the subscribe to her channel, you know, participate and check out the channel because she has a lot of gems and gold that she will be able to oh, share with thank you. you. Right. So we're going to say goodbye because I know it's hard to say goodbye when we're having a good time. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. So okay. All the best. Take care. And I see you at the summit anyway. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Ace. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye, guys. All right. That was nice.